Welcome to The Open Book with Amy and Tommy. And before we begin today, I want to share that the passage that we're going to study is not the passage that we'll hear in worship on Sunday. We are looking forward to this week welcoming um, guest author Mark Iaconelli, who will who will be with us um, throughout the day, leading in in various ways. And we're honored that he'll be um, he'll be preaching um, on Sunday as well. But for our Bible study today, we did want to continue with the lectionary passage of the day um, as we continue through the Lenten journey. Um, one thing that that has struck me in in this season's passages is um, our gospel stories we have been reading are beautiful and significant and in meaningful encounters that people have with Christ. Um, and, and for me in the Lenten season, it's, it's a time where we, we think about following Christ and we, we think about Christ's time in the desert where he is considering who he is and his calling and the work God has for him to do. And, and we do that as well during this season. And so I think that it is, it's wonderful to read these stories of encounters with, with Christ as we ourselves think about encountering Christ and how we learn about our own calling and, and our own work and our own relationships. Um, so, Tommy, will you read our passage for us? I'd be glad to. This is John 4, starting with verse 5. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews did not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well? and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all these things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her jar of water and went back to the city. She said to the people, 
Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more than harvest comes? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for what you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done, she said. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Well, as, as we were <laughs> chatting before we, we began, we decided, yeah, we can't go through this one verse by verse or we'll be here all day. Yes. Um, so so let's just begin with this question. As, as you read this passage today, or let me know if you want me to go first, what stood out to you? I, I love this text. This is one of my favorite texts in scripture. Mm -hmm. I just like that uh, Jesus kind of moves outside of boundaries mm -hmm. and expectations to encounter this woman at the well mm -hmm. and has a deep theological conversation with her. Yes. Something that n people didn't even understand why he was doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a fascinating story for me because the way I was taught it and the way that I may even read it now initially um, has this woman um as someone who is maybe sexual sexually immoral or has moved through husband to husband to husband mm -hmm. and i think that's probably how a lot of people see it they're just mm -hmm. grateful that jesus forgives even a sinner like her yeah but i'm i'm guessing this is just my guess as i've researched this she's probably widowed she may be barren she has probably been left over and over and she's coming out all these times to a well without anybody else because mm -hmm. people don't want her bad luck or her cursedness or whatever you want to call it to rub off on them. Mm -hmm. So she's kind of been alienated maybe from the society. So I, my hope when I read this now, I don't think of this as some sexual immort Im immorality. It's, it's more of a, a person who's had some really bad times. Yeah, come upon her who is ostracized from the society maybe mm -hmm. who's probably been used in ways that nobody would have wanted and Jesus comes to her and says we have a mutual need mm -hmm. let's have a conversation let's um let's talk about how we might testify to the goodness of God in the midst of all of this so that's how I kind of approach this text um, what about you? What stands out to you? Um, well, and and I've heard. I'm, let me kind of share some reflections. As, as I was thinking as as you were were talking, is is yeah, I, that's so much of what I I heard um, connecting shame with with this woman. And it doesn't. I don't know that it it specifically says. There's like a hidden detail that gives you. Or, not so hidden, but you have to think about it to pick it up. There's a detail that helps you kind of know and understand that she's kind of coming by herself when no one else is around. And that's when it says it was about noon. Nobody goes out to do this hard work in the heat and the hottest part of the of the day. And so I, so I just remember hearing that as I was as I was as I was growing up, like, okay, well, we knew that she was she wanted to go and nobody else would be around. And so, 
so I remember hearing this story and, and connecting with shame rather than, and so I love looking at this woman as, as a woman who has had challenges and difficulties and, and a hard, uh, a hard way and a hard, hard life. What really struck me as you read it, um, which is fascinating then to connect it with that is her curiosity and her confidence um, both in, in her conversation with Jesus and with people back in town. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, because she's a, Mar- a Samaritan, she was an outcast because she was a woman, she was an outcast. And so these, these, she is not the typical person who would, you know, a Pharisee, a religious prominent leader is a type of person who could and would approach Jesus with curiosity and, um, but, and, and, and confidence like she did, but, but she, um, but she did. I mean, as soon as he asked her for a drink, how is it that you, you know, why are you doing this? And, and, and so they have this exchange going back and forth and she keeps asking questions and pointing out things and sharing things that, that she knows. And so, And so that was fascinating to me. And then, and then going and approaching the town and, and for whatever reason, she's been married so many times, um, but she still approaches them. Hey, come and meet this guy. And, and they believed her there at the end. They said to the woman, it's no longer because of what you said that we believe it's because we've heard it ourselves. And so so this woman's voice and, and, and her engagement in relationship with her community and with Jesus is just fascinating me today. Um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of said she was probably on the margins or out. I, we don't know that because obviously when she went back and told the story, they listened. Yeah. Or maybe it was, maybe it was, you know, this is a person that's been through so much. Maybe there's a little compassion or maybe at least pity. (laughs) Mm-hmm. on this woman um divorce back in that day didn't just you know it wasn't just a woman saying hey i think i'm going to leave you for another guy right that would have been yeah that would have <laughs> probably cost her her life right this was more a result of something either a result of a husband's infidelity or a death of a husband that just keep and that's how women survived through the through men taking care of them in this yeah. time yes it, yes it oh. was a, that was a yeah and so this text i mean i love jesus kind of just approaching her and and it, it takes her off guard uh jesus often surprises us by the people that jesus interacts mm-hmm. with we like to say jesus only <laughs> here are the people i want to interact with mm-hmm. but jesus goes all over the tenant tax collectors sinners women at the well who are Samaritan. He goes and stays in Samaria for a couple of days. Um, that's totally not what be, would be expected of him. Mm-hmm. That's not going to make him popular right. among the religious leaders. And so maybe I think there's a message for us, which he kind of pushes to the disciples of how do you invite people into the kingdom of God? How do you share testimony of what Jesus has done for you? Um, how Jesus has welcomed you when no one else does. I mean, how do you get to that point where this is what we're, we're creating a culture of invitation? Yes. And that's as a church, something we need to think about a lot. How do we create this, this openness to people who may not be the people we would expect to need what they need? And how, and how have we not, and, and I am a part of the we, how have we not mm-hmm. figured this out yet? Mm-hmm. Um, because just over and over and over in the gospels, you know, this woman and children and tax collectors and, and just over and over, Jesus is so open to people coming, you know, authentically, you know, last week it was, it was Nicodemus who, okay, okay, tell me what this is about. Help me understand this. And this week, yeah. here's this. And and he's so open to engage. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and help us. And so why, 
So why do, why do we still so often find ourselves and, and why so often does the church still have this culture of having to have it all figured out when, when our faith is centered around, um, around Christ who, who was just open to questions and, and who, who had these encounters and these experiences of, um, with, with people. And so, so I love this, this reminder to, um, to just, Mm -hmm. you know, be ourselves and we don't have to come in as the, you know, with with all the answers but but we can come in with all the questions and well what about this and what about that and what do you mean by by this so yeah 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 because if the field i I think we have a this happens with everything but we have a scarcity mentality and we have such a hard time getting out of that Mm -hmm. um usually it's around resources but yes i think it's also around people yes um so Jesus is saying here, the fields are ripe for harvest. Mm-hmm. All we have to do is go invite. <laughs> go, yeah. Go see where people are asking questions. What are the yeah what are the needs people are having? How do we help them experience living water yes. or um, peace and or inclusion or whatever? I don't know what the mm-hmm. word is that I'm looking for, but it feels like here they it's all about rejoicing together um that we are a community mm-hmm. that we can love each other despite all the things that <clears throat> excuse me have gone on in life <clears throat> and we're all in process and we're learning together you know the woman asked had the questions and asked the questions and discovered but but then the people in the community did too. It wasn't just a, oh, yeah. okay, well, so-and-so said it, so I believe it. And that that's true. They heard and they had their own experiences. And, and, and this, this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love working with children is because they don't have as much, um, th- they're not worried about asking, qu- you know, they, if they don't understand something, they'll say, you know, they'll they'll just kind of yeah. call it out and and ask ask the the questions we're we're learning the lord's prayer right now in in agape kids and and there's a lot of i mean you just look at the first phrase and you know who art in heaven hallowed be thy name what is what is art what is and yeah. and we tried to our, our first week doing it we well what is thy and we talked yeah. about it forever and they could not figure it out it was like the and they and finally i just wrote on the board your and they were like oh but but they but then when we talked about you know what do you hear and what do you think why is it in old english and what is this and there was nowhere in adult bible study classes it isn't so much like what does such and such mean or i don't know about this so And and this this woman has this openness to to just kind of you know help me help me understand and I'm just I'm just so drawn to to that that sort of um, you know that sort of faith is yeah. just the curious curious the curious faith mm-hmm. yeah I was when when I was reading this I was thinking to a experience I have with a I, I won't say her name so I, she's in preschool um, right where I sat at her table on a Wednesday night and her first question is, why are you sitting here? <laughs> Which is kind of like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> and yes. then I, I wasn't, I don't think she was overly happy that I was sitting next to her. Yeah. Um, until I asked her a question Yeah. that, that kind of connected with something she was thinking. Yeah. And then as soon as I asked her that question that, that connected with her, she yeah. started telling me a story. And then we had a conversation. Yeah. Um, so that was fascinating. Yes. And, and it kind of reminded me of this is like, why are you talking to me? Right. And then he says, well, if you knew <laughs> this would be the case. And then right. they start having this conversation. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of opens up to new things. Absolutely. So um, we've been talking about this, but I have came across this um, when I was re- researching a little bit. Caroline Lewis, who's a professor at Luther Seminary, which I think is in Minneapolis. I'm not sure. 
um, she has this idea of, of this passage as a theological conversation. Mm. And she says there are five characteristics to it. And I, uh, we've already talked about some of these, but I'm just going to say them quickly. And if one of these stands out or if this is something somebody wants to talk about in their Bible study, it'd be great. The first is that she says the conversation begins with mutual vulnerability. So Jesus is thirsty and she needs the water that only Jesus can provide. Mm. So it's interesting that they both come where this need both come with this need to a conversation they don't know what each other's need is mm -hmm. but jesus kind of starts it out and says can you get me some water <laughs> yeah yeah the second thing is that exactly what you've been saying questions are critical to theological conversations yes the curiosity what's going on here what does this word mean i think adults have trouble with words too they use words just simply like faith and righteousness and salvation and all of these kind of interesting words. And and when you push to say, what does this mean? Or what do you mean by this? Uh, they have, it's, it's hard to articulate. And so kids are not afraid to ask it. Adults are afraid to ask, what does it mean to be saved? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a, that's a thing too. So questions are critical. Third, conversations that are intentional and, and are generally interested in the other person, take time. This is not something we say, do you believe this, this, and this? <laughs> and then check off the list. This is not a Roman road to salvation where you say, here's a verse, here's a verse, now let's pray this prayer together. Mm -hmm. And then we don't see each other again. Yeah. This was a conversation, and then eventually another couple of days conversation with everybody. Yes. So it takes time. Fourth, when it comes to having a conversation with Jesus or about Jesus, expect to be surprised. Mm -hmm. Expect something different than you even knew. And then the final characteristic, she says, is anticipate being changed in the process. So mutual vulnerability, questions, taking appropriate time, expecting to be surprised and expecting to be changed. Mm -hmm. Those are the theological conversations we have with one another. Mm -hmm. And I thought this is a good model for that for us. Mm -hmm. That helps us kind of move in that direction. That That is good. That is good. Um, yeah. And then thinking about, so, so that had already jumped out to me, this, you know, this woman and how she, she approached this. And then looking at that in parallel in in the disciples and how they approached Jesus and and this conversation. And again, there was there was some some curiosity of you know why are you speaking to me? And they come, why are you speaking to her? Um, yeah. But but they didn't they didn't come. Um, they didn't seem to have the same sort of, of curiosity. Um, you know, they, they seem to come a little bit more with, with things, with things figured out. I, I, it was just interesting to kind of see how, how they, they approach it. And, and, and I wonder how, how we do that. I mean, I, I think I, I find myself, you know, maybe more, more like a, one of the disciples than than the woman often although I mean I'm very very curious but also what would have been like if they would have had some conversation or curiosity around the love of God and the kingdom of God welcomes all people and and includes all people mm -hmm um versus just being about about the the business of you know okay well we got to go on we got stuff to do we need you to go ahead and eat and so so we can eat and we can move on and keep doing our job rather than seeing um you know conversation and and relationship yeah. as um as the calling and and the place i wonder at one point the disciples seem to never understand that jesus never speaks in a way that is just straightforward yeah uh, so it's like 
um, they're encouraging him to eat, and he says, I have food that you know nothing about. So they think he has like some, like a granola bar stuffed in his pocket right. or something. Well, and they're like, well, nobody's brought him something Where'd to you eat. you get food? And, <laughs> right, rather, just this for? rather yeah. than, yeah, and, and the and the woman, when he, when they talked about water, yeah. the, the water, the then she... I'm, I'm looking back and it's 15 and, and she so she said well you don't have a and she just named it out loud where they kind of talked to the side about themselves like but yeah. nobody brought him anything to eat where she just she said to him but you don't have a bucket and the well is deep and so where are you getting the living water because this we have you know and so she's she's kind of processing out loud and and curiosity and and engaging him where where there's as much it's a little bit more, you know, kind of squabbling. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah there, there's this about something totally different. And Jesus, yeah. you know, spiritual matters. This is what he's trying to focus them on. Right. Rather than these day-to-day -day mundane. In the mundane, there is yeah. something deeply spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another so. phrase in here that I just like. Um, what Because I, it is rare in scripture to say God is. It's mm. just not a not a thing a lot. And so I don't I don't I think there are a couple of I don't remember what all there are. There may be three, but the two that I'm familiar with is God is spirit and in first John we get God is love. Mm. So those are the only two things that are just like followed by God is. Now we have lots of things that kind of describe God in other ways. Sure. But the things we know for sure, God is spirit and God is love. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's an interesting, because you have that in 24. So when they're thinking about where to worship, the statement is God is spirit. God is not bound by the sanctuary at First Baptist Church of Asheville or the mm -hmm. temple in Jerusalem mm -hmm. or the mountain where they are mm -hmm. or God Anywhere. meets you God where you spirit. are because God is exactly. spirit. God isn't a tangible sure. item that you have to approach. God is God always is present. And yeah. God's spirit connects to your spirit. Mm -hmm. And we worship in spirit. And, yeah. truth. and that truth is 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 love. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what, I mean, we get that in scripture too. That the truth is that God is love and, and we are called to love everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's an interesting text here um, because she then moves to, I know the Messiah is coming. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says in the first time in John, he uses his first I am statement. Yeah. So all of John is, I am the shepherd. We talked about this at some point, maybe. I'm the light of the, I am the world. Shepherd, I'm the bread. I'm, the, I'm the gate. I am. Yeah. I'm the gate. Yep. But here it's, I am he. Mm -hmm. I'm the Messiah. I'm the Christ. Um. The one who is speaking to you. And that's the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's an interesting thing too. Um, I am. Is. It connects him. To God as spirit. The Messiah is sitting here speaking to you. Yeah. Including you into this kingdom. And. And God has called me to complete God's work by welcoming all people mm -hmm. all of you samaritans into this yeah just believe me yeah here's here's something that that is curious to me um is that there isn't a lot of god is mm -hmm. because we as people all throughout history are working on figuring that out yeah. but then in scripture there is i am mm -hmm. and but back Old Testament with Moses, I am who I am, and then Jesus all throughout. God knows who God is, and and then shares that. So that so that's fascinating. So just kind of thinking about about that us us figuring out, but spending time with Christ, we find out who God is because Christ knows, and I I am that Messiah. I am this. I am and. So, so rather than getting wrapped up and listening to ourselves, let's come to Christ and let's listen to what Jesus has to say to us mm -hmm. 
and help us understand who who God is. Um, so so that was yeah because as you were saying that God is I was like but what about the I am's and so then thinking about well that's yeah. that's people saying here's who God is oh but we don't know <laughs> some of that is well because we're and not in John, and we're in not John, that we have all the I am's yeah in John yeah. yeah 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 which is and most are metaphorical yes I mean they're they're not like I, I don't I don't know what to how yeah. they would be but you know i'm the good shepherd that's a you have to figure out what does it mean that i am mm -hmm. is the good shepherd yeah um, but i love it but it does connect to jesus as the god as explaining who god is yeah because jesus in our belief is incarnate mm -hmm. is god incarnate mm -hmm. and the spirit flows through mm -hmm. jesus and later into us as yeah. jesus yeah sends it that way and you kind of alluded to this i think and in the, in the end of the verse, it's no longer the people said, we we don't just believe because of the testimony of others. We have learned this for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a fascinating statement, too, that it is um, we hear the gospel proclaimed mm -hmm. through the testimony of others and how God has um, been a part of their lives, has spoken to them. Last night, uh, it's Thursday when we're recording this. Last night, we had a wonderful time in the chapel where we heard testimony mm -hmm. of how God had been with someone through a lifetime and yeah. continues to be with. Mm -hmm. That's a fabulous way to understand it. But when we hear those things, we can't just rely on the testimony of others right. and live vicariously through them. Right. Here, it's I've heard, but now I've experienced. Now I've, I'm, I'm embodying the spirit mm -hmm. in my own life. So I, I love that too. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really great. It's really great. Anything else as we wrap up that you want to share about this passage? Oh, no, this is just, what, as I said, a favorite. I've read, I read it often and always learn something new. It, it is good. It is good. And we look forward to being with you on Sunday and and we won't be hearing this passage in in script in in worship, but um, but we hope that you will join us in Lenten Vespers, where we'll hear this passage again and we'll welcome Austin Maynard, who is going to share his journey of calling and figuring out um, who he is and, and where God is is calling him to be. So we look forward to worship on Sunday with our guest, Mark Iaconelli, and we look forward to Lenten Vespers this coming Wednesday. And as we continue on this journey together, go in peace. Go in peace.